Are we ready? Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting to, to order. And I believe we have a quorum. Uh, are our phone people dialing in? Sherry? Nancy? Bob, are you there? I'm here. All right. Nancy? Sherry Jones. Sherry Jones is here. All right. So we do have a quorum. Yeah, Bob, we got you. Nancy? So I believe Nancy is the only one we don't have accounted for. Check our roster. Okay. Our first order of business, uh, we do have a quorum. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes from March 5th and April 2nd. I guess these were done by the previous committee and were never approved and we have to approve them. So hopefully you have looked them over and uh, do we have any corrections or changes? Otherwise, we'll move for approval. Hearing none, they were approved. All right. I first want to introduce all the members of the committee. We have myself, Roberta Davidson as chairperson, Barbara Sloan, Barbara's there, Nancy Hunt, she has not called in yet, Marley Kissler, Sherry Jones has called in, Marshall Adams, Bob Hartley has called in, John Nichols, and Director Jerry Connors. Okay. And then also with us today is Russ Boston and Carl Wilhelm. And Pete Finelli. Pete Finelli. Those double L's always get. Yeah. Is that Nancy? Hi guys, I'm in Colorado. Okay, so we have definitely have a quorum. Okay. Indeed. All right. Now one of the chores we have to do is select someone either to be the secretary of the committee or it's going to be one of those tag your it because uh, we need to keep records of the meeting, even though it's going to be broadcast. We do need minutes. And uh, do we have a volunteer to be secretary? I will do it, says Nancy. All right, thank you, Nancy. Well, I think we're covered for today. All right, great. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on. Uh, Johnson, do you want to go over the uh, use of the microphones? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Johnson, new tech person. 
So the, the conference mics you see in front of you with the goose neck, they're on a push to talk system. You can just push it when you want to speak and push it again when you're done speaking. The wireless, so most of you are not on there. That's a little bit different, but we'll tune it to your voice so you don't have to be too close. So you can keep a normal distance, six to 10 inches, and we'll, we'll bring up your volume as you go. So there shouldn't be any problems. If there is, we'll stop you. So anyway, nice to meet you all. Any questions? Okay, last year, or last board, uh, Brian Wallace headed up a revising all the, uh, updating the bylaws and policies, and a lot of the uh, document, those that were part of bylaws for the properties committee were moved into the policies. So right now, we're gonna be looking at the policies. And this describes pretty much what the um, committee is responsible for. One thing I did notice going through uh, board docs under the library section, they put in here for the properties committee that the committee shall assist the staff when requested in gathering, organizing, and maintaining a library of technical information relating to the construction of association facilities and the appropriate operations manuals for mechanical, electrical, and other systems. I'm assuming, Russ, that should be removed. 
Yeah, that happened about 15 years ago, maybe even more. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a little stale. All right. So if uh, on, I will email, so make sure this gets removed from the uh, board docs. Okay. The next is a uh, role and goals of the properties committee. Uh, I was wondering if anybody had any particular item they wanted to add for us as a goal this year. Or we can have it uh, carry over to next month and work on it at that point. Any of our callers have anything to say? Okay. No, I, I think uh, I think it's pretty good the way it is. All right. So going from there, uh, Russ, you're up. Section six. Okay. So every year. Uh, you guys are tasked with doing a facilities tour. Um, so we need to set a schedule of said tour. Um, where the way it's been done in the past is, um, I think it's the day of the meetings at 7 a.m. Or maybe it's in between meetings. I'm trying to remember. Um, so 7 a.m. we meet. We uh, I think we usually start at Beardsley. Beardsley can be done in a day. Coons can be done in a day. Um, Johnson is two days. The day we do Coons, we usually slip in the metal shop. It's a lot of walking. The idea is to get everybody out there to see what we have and to generate ideas, since you're members, as to what you would like to see improved. And then while we're walking, we always find maintenance issues because we don't have everything fixed all the time. So we end up with a list of those as well. Are you going to provide us a schedule? I can. Is 7 o'clock too early? or are, So here's another question. Is everybody going to attend or is it going to be a volunteer who wants to be a part of it? What is everybody's choice? Jerry? Full attend. Last year, it, last year it was very valuable for all of us to attend. We um, understood then what was going on with these different facilities. 7 a.m. was a very comfortable time because it was cooler, uh, especially if we had done it in the month of September, which is when we did it last year. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, so I will build a schedule based on 7 a.m. start time. Um, and then if anybody has any disagreements with some of the dates, we can always adjust from there. So we're still going to do uh, Coons? I, I, I have something to say because uh, I won't be back till about the last week of September. You're breaking up, Bob. Well, we have to start these because we have to be done uh, and get it, all our recommendations by the end of November. So, And if you're who I think you are, you know our places pretty well. Well, so, Carl has to set, I mean, excuse me, Russ has to set them up. Yeah, l let me look at last year's. I'll shoot that out to everybody and we can make adjustments from there. How does that sound? Sounds good. Thank you. The 
end of November. Correct, George? Russ, does that give us enough time? We'll just have to do more days during the week. That's fine with me if that works for everybody else. It's only, it only takes about a couple hours, three, three hours at the most. Um, and all but Johnson is a one day, is a one day thing. So it's not too bad. Six days at the most. So. I want more at Coons be done so it'll be easier to get around. That is very true too. Yeah. Um, Coons will be, yeah, we may not be able to do all of Coons depending on what's going on and where, um, but it's still a day either way. Mm -hmm. Where am I on the agenda? Did you want to explain the difference between capital and maintenance projects? So the big difference between capital and maintenance projects, um, anything over $5,000, anything lasting more than five years, um, all of our parking lots, most all of our parking lots, uh, reoccurring roofs, things of that nature, all fall under Carl Capital Projects. Um, reoccurring maintenance, could be from sanding and finishing small hardwood floors, repairing doors, windows, small little things like that, air conditioners. So air conditioners can fall. We keep them running, but when they need to be replaced, it's a capital. That kind of expels, explains it pretty well. Okay. I'm not sure what they mean by reporting timetable. <laughs> uh. I mentioned this to Karen, and I believe it's uh, the time frame that you report is need to be ready after the tours. Okay. So, and you answered that with end of November. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on, do we... Uh, have any questions before we move on to section seven from any of the members? Okay. Okay, moving on to section seven, uh, update on facilities, capital projects. Russ, you wanna start it, Carl? I'll go first. All right. Uh, my report is from May 2020 through to today's meeting um, on capital projects update. I'll also share with you some uh, carryover project schedules <clears throat> and some upcoming project schedules. From R.H. Johnson, the tennis ramp deck surface renovation was completed on 527, 2020. We completed the ARC building exhaust system installation on 527-2020. The Memos Cafe gas line project was completed on 731 of 2020. And the Sports Pavilion North Entry Flooring Replacement Project was completed on 77-2020. Moving on to Kuntz, swim and fitness spa room remodel was completed 723-2020. Directional signage installation was completed, 6.30 of 2020. The art room accordion partition replacement was completed, 8.4, 2020. And you'll also note that after, on my report, you'll see the difference of uh, what um, budget year those projects were listed in. Either the FY1920 carryover 
or the current FY 2021 budget that I'm working in. At Beardsley, the Arts and Crafts Building flat roof restoration was completed on 820, 2020. The Sagebrush Photography Club and off Ops Office flooring replacement was completed at, on 827, 2020. Moving over to Palm Ridge, the Activity Center Lobby Hallway Carpet Replacement was completed 819, 2020. The Activity Center Summit Hall Hardwood Floors, Screen and Ceiling was completed 821, 2020. Next are a few of our golf course projects. Grandview Crooked Putter Flooring Replacement was completed. Echo Mesa, Grandview, Trail Ridge, and Deer Valley uh, course front and back nine restroom roof restorations were completed on 522-2020. And then finally, just recently, Pebble Brook, the driving range electrical project was completed 826-2020. We also have capital projects, FY 1920 carryover project schedule that I'd like to talk about. We are currently still working on the Kuntz master projects of which includes the parking lot, fitness weaving quilters edition, the storage room edition, the courtyard improvements. And these projects are tentatively scheduled uh, for a, a, a completion around September 30th. The Kuntz Swim and Fitness Locker Room Showers was a facts and findings project added to the Kuntz Master Projects and is also tentatively scheduled for a September 30th completion. The R.H. Johnson Large Dog Park Renovation, the project tentatively scheduled for October 31st. Uh, just a little information here is I have approximately five weeks of construction irrigation installation and planting installation um, left in my schedule. Um, again, I'm comfortable with October 31st, even with uh, weather permitting. Uh, the reason why uh, the project is not going to open until November 1st or 2nd, uh, which is a Monday, is due to the fact that Todd Patty has to follow behind me after I install all the new sod and he has to do the um, overseeding for the fall grass. So the project will actually be done um, a few weeks prior to November 1st, but uh, Todd has to uh, do that overseeding. The next portion of my report is Capital Projects Update FY 2021 for upcoming project schedules. This will help everybody understand when we're walking the projects coming up over the next few weeks, or the not the project so much, but the, the rec centers, um, what's coming up? Uh, what, what am I gonna continue on on my schedule? After completing the master projects at Kuntz in September, I will move on to the Kuntz pool and patio deck resurfacing to begin upon surrounding projects completion and weather permitting approximately seven, September 28th, and this project should last approximately two weeks. Uh, the main reason for the, the scheduling on this project is I can't have the dusty construction work surrounding that project affect the installation of that new surface. Kuntz parking lots and tr walking track asphalt seal and stripe will also begin after the surrounding projects are complete, weather permitting October 3rd, and should last approximately one week. After those two last projects are done, uh, I would be officially complete with my Kuntz projects on the FY 1920 budget and the FY 2021 budget. Another upcoming project, Scheduled for a September 11th through the 21st is the Pebble Brook Pro Shop parking lot, asphalt mill and replacement. This project involves taking out all the asphalt and installing a new parking lot. Beardsley Arts and Crafts parking lot, asphalt, seal and stripe. This is our three-year um, operational program where we 
simply seal the parking lots and restripe them. That is September 14th through the 18th. Also at Grandview Pro Shop parking lot, the asphalt seal and stripe is a two-day project, September 24th through the 25th. And then finally, the R.H. Johnson Library flat roof and parapet wall restoration is a tentative start of October. That date is yet to be determined uh, based on vendor uh, availability and weather. It's critical that we have good weather for a roof restoration. So that completes my report. Um, I'm very pleased with all the progress that we have going on in, in town uh, at our rec centers. I have no issues to report. Um, the general contractors or subcontractors involved in all these projects have performed excellently. Um, the general contractor foresight um, for the Kuntz Master Projects is doing a great job. Uh, they are on schedule and basically the last two weeks of September are uh, what we call our punch list zone. So um, making lists, making sure that everything's done to our scope of work. And um, I also discussed with both the Weavers President's Club President and the Quilters Club President um, who meet with me regularly because, you know, these are their future rooms. They've done electrical walks to make sure that their um, requested areas of electrical and TV locations are um, placed in the right location. Uh, any special requests that they had for these rooms um, that I've met their, their needs and their scope of work. And um, I informed them that basically the first couple weeks of October would be their move-in time. And um, then based on what the rec center staff says about, you know, rooms being available with our COVID situation, uh, their rooms will be ready for them to use. So and that's my report. Thank you. Russ? Okay, so our list. Um, so since the last meeting, we finished painting the guardrails, the flood canal crossings throughout the community. And as we did that, we found out that the flood control with the county was replacing them with different ones. So all of our nicely painted handrails went away anyways. Good communication. Completing the remodel of the golf studio at Grandview. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, it turned out really nice. Uh, we also installed new HVAC unit in the Crooked Putter. Remodeled the kitchen service counter uh, while we were closed during the COVID-19 closure. And Carl had the VCT towel replaced in the back of the restaurant, which had been lingering over our heads as to how we were going to get that done without shutting them down. So that all worked out well. We replaced five budgeted HVAC units in-house on Beardsley Arts and Crafts building in March. And then some of them were uh, done in July. Twelve budgeted units were replaced by vendor in April on the sports pavilion. We also patched all the woodpecker holes around Deer Valley Pro Shop painted and installed metal mesh around the bump outs where the woodpeckers were making the homes. Uh, we also, once we found out that that worked, we also proceeded to do the same thing at Palm Ridge Arts and Crafts Building, installing this metal mesh. Um, so far it's working. Um, we're making some slight adjustments as we do have a few stubborn ones that refuse to go away, but we have made uh, huge efforts as far as that goes, because Mother Nature was winning that battle. Also, we did sprinkler head replacements in the entire sports pavilion. Um, that is about 95% complete. They ran into some scheduling issues with some leagues, so they're making some adjustments to finish that up. We completed drywall paint modifications to the Kuntz Swim and Fitness monitor station and lobby. So we're trying to find a home for Frank. We pushed the monitor station further towards the front entry door, um, and then Frank will, his office will end up being where the old monitor station was. We completed the installation of new outdoor Beardsley shuffleboard courts, completed the restoration of Beardsley aquatic shower tile and grout, which the guys did a fantastic job there. We actually brought the board, uh, the last board through on a tour. It's just a shame we can't open it yet. Completed the restoration of the sports pavilion restroom tile and grout, Completed drywall and paint restoration of Beardsley Sagebrush Room and constructed and assembled and installed all the COVID-related 
safety precaution screens and such for the COVID openings. That ends my report. Yes, I got a couple of questions. Yeah, Bob. You bet we did. He made a special trip out just for us. That's at the sports pavilion. So some of it is requests, some of it is us, depending on what it is. So the sprinkler heads, for instance, we had uh, one sprinkler head over the bowling lanes that gave away. I've had four since I've been here. Um, over hardwood floors and bowling lanes are the last places you want water damage. So our systems are 45 years old. They say they have a life of 50. Um, so we wanted to you know, kind of get the heads up run at it, so we're replacing them with the new styles that won't have these failures. Okay, very good, thank you. Ah. Thank you. Um, Carl? Yes, sir. Okay, last year we were talking about the metal shop. Um, has anything been done as far as planning is concerned? <clears throat> good question, John. So I'm currently uh, have moved forward and have been working diligently on the metal shop project. Um, the president um, and leadership of the club have been available, whether they've been traveling or not. So um, my beginning work July 1st was to take a full evaluation of 100% uh, of the equipment, the electrical requirements, and the space uh, utilization that all that equipment um, uh, takes. Uh, I, I put that into a document to our architect so that he could uh, provide that to an electrical engineer. And um, then we had final conversations about um, what size this building uh, needed to be. Um, last year when we discussed it, I was very clear that uh, we, we started the conversation with 2,800 square foot. I have been able to uh, work with the architect and we designed the building down to 2,600 square foot, okay? Um, we've also had our first Maricopa County pre-permit application meeting that happened uh, two weeks ago. Um, that was uh, via web conference with uh, all the leaders of county planning and development. Um, they, by department, whether it's McDot for streets, whether it's um, you know, the civil engineers from county, whether it's um, plan review for electrical, plumbing, and mechanical, um, all those departments come together in a room and take a look at our plan. And before we actually even draw the, the final plans for first re review, uh, they give us all of the pointers, make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, our, our plan is well accepted. The only complication that has arisen is uh, the metal shop is two parcels. The current metal shop building is on parcel one, and the parking lot is on parcel two. Our square footage involves building onto parcel two by a few feet. So the, my first task is I have to get the two parcels um, surveyed and, um, and reclassified into one parcel, which is no problem. and. Um, and that should just take a few weeks. So I've already uh, engaged uh, in agreement with the civil engineer and the grading and drainage engineer, and they will be making a new set of site plans for us um, beginning any time now. And uh, so the next step in the process is uh, receiving that um, new documentation, and the architect uh, next week, uh, uh, we have his agreement as well. I will sign that and we'll start him on actually making the official documents to turn into county, so. 
Okay, that sounds pretty good. Good start. Uh, Russ, I had a question for you. The center divider out here, I've been noticing for the last six months to a year that people have been pulling bushes and cactus out. Is somebody going to be replacing that, replacing that or redoing it? That's not me, John. Who's doing all That's that Todd, work? That would be Todd Patty. Todd Patty's So I couldn't even begin to answer that question. <laughs> I don't know if his people are doing it or they're being... I don't think we're having any theft there, if that's what you mean. No, I don't um, think it's theft. It looks intentional. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. That's... Uh, the only thing that I'm in charge of that grows is mold. How's that? Okay. <laughs> and mold is unwanted on buildings. It's my problem. Okay. So if it's green, it's Todd. <laughs> okay, George, uh, do you know anything about it? John, what was the question? Because I'm really not paying attention when you talk. Well, I was talking about the center divider out here that the tearing up all the plants, the cactus, and the bushes uh, for the on, past six on months. On Johnson? Right. On Arch Johnson. Unfortunately, that's not our property, and we have uh, nothing to actually do with what the county's doing in and out of there. It really is. We have nothing to do with it. Even though we take care of it, our prides take care of it, what goes on there is totally the county's problem. Okay, so I probably need to talk to Todd to find out what's what's happening between. Okay. Do we have any other questions? For Carl and Russ, uh, things have gone really smooth through this whole building process up at Coons, I know. And that doesn't come from no work. And so we appreciate what you guys have done. It, it, it's tough. Uh, but, but it seemed to me that everything just went very, very smoothly. Marshall, like I said, too, the, uh, a lot of the credit goes to the vendor that we selected. Um, I mean, they have high standards. They meet with us every two weeks for a production report. I meet with the superintendent daily, um, and they do take my input. Uh, we've made custom changes on the fly based on, um, you know, not everybody understands how we operate, you know, and, and an architect can't see everything, so uh, they've been... Uh, very helpful, and I could say another positive note is um, we've shown some significant savings to date too. So, um, so the the point of having the CMAR contractor on this was that um, it avoids change orders. You know, we we established a budget. The architects and the CMAR um, general contractor met that design budget and uh, actually. It, uh, exceeded it, meaning it, we came in uh, quite a bit cheaper than what we originally budgeted for that project. And um, our plus and minus change orders has not exceeded uh, our budget. So, very happy. Yeah, like I say, that doesn't come just easy. And, you know, one little thing about a contractor that I always kind of keep an eye on is when they leave at night, it's clean. There's not messes anywhere, and I think that's a tribute to them. So, thank you, Marshall. Any other questions for Carl and Russ? Okay. Excuse me. Move on to Pete Finelli with his financial report. Well, thank you much, everybody. I see a few new faces on here, but. Uh, I appreciate your willingness to volunteer your time and we'll hope to try and keep you educated on and as much as you want to ask and we'll be very transparent. I was asked today to address three items to give the properties committee a little bit of understanding of words that you hear thrown around a lot, but reserve study, reserve funds, and then uh, just an update on the capital trackers. 
which is to say the uh, end of fiscal year 1920 and then where we're at after two months into the, the current fiscal year. Um, to start, I want to go through the reserve study. Uh, Z.J. Blaming was the gentleman, the consultant that you, many of you might have heard from back in January when he presented to in Palm Ridge. Uh, his presentation uh, was much broader than this, but I uh, broke down some of the items that were relevant to this committee or just general knowledge. The purpose in the bottom right, the purpose of the reserve study is to prepare the association for significant expenses it can expect to face over time while minimizing or eliminating what we don't ever want to hear, surprises or special assessments. And so three components of a proper reserve R&R uh, uh, replacement capital spend uh, have three kind of com uh, uh, compositions to it. We start by what are the items that are considered to be on the repair and replacement list. And certain criteria that we incorporate into the 12 or 1300 line items that are on the reserve study are useful life. All these are on there, predictable remaining life, and are they above a minimum cost, which uh, Russ alluded to a few minutes ago is $5,000 and a five-year life. Uh, I think the uh, depth sometimes is not really understood by a lot of people of what a, a reserve study uh, is for uh, an association as large as ours. And sometimes just by listing items, you, it somewhat can stagger you as how many items are uh, considered at any given time. Uh, golf courses, you know, there's about 600 pieces of equipment. Uh, alone for those and then of course some of the more material things such as irrigation and wells and pumps are, are carried in a, a whole other category of consideration. The sports pavilion with, with its uh, significant presence uh, on this campus. Rec centers, you know, I'm, I'm only highlighting some of the more material items but pools and the theater and fitness equipment. Uh, you get into some of the rec areas and courts and you can see those up there. Uh, Carl's uh, numerous asphalt uh, uh, components, whether that's parking lots and, of course, Todd for some of the cart paths. Vehicles are all over, uh, landscaping that we have now for the CCNR, maintenance. And uh, as he alluded to, there's over 200 HVACs, floorings at every single location or uh, every place we make a document of the floor plans and make sure that they're all on a grid to be replaced at a, at a prescribed time. And then when the, and you guys know this, that's what your purpose is so valuable is to assist us in assessing the, the reserve study does not become the budget. That's a commonly misunderstood conception. It spearheads us to consider it. And then you guys have a very important part in assessing whether you agree with the uh, decision to move forward with some of these um, replacements. Uh, again, there, that's just to highlight that less than 5,000 and we don't consider any of that um, for reserve study policy. Um, the second phrase you guys hear a lot is called fully funded balance, commonly acronym of FFB. A real nutshell is, I take the top two lines, this is in a nutshell, so the first of all the Acronyms, useful life, remaining useful life, cost, and the fully funded balance. So in this particular complete example, this has nothing to do with rec centers of Sun City West. The first one said that a about $4,600 current cost had a useful life of five and it's up against its remaining useful life. So to fully fund the replacement of that, your 4,600 would expect to be um, in the reserve funds. This pool resurfacing is at the half point life. 10 year useful life, it's halfway into it. Current cost is 10,000. You would expect to have 50% of that. So in a nutshell, that's each individual one is broken up as are 1200 line items. And each then aggregates to this fully funded balance. And in a second, I'll get to our number, but that's in a nutshell how our, that FFP component is calculated. 
next one is the actual funds and the reserve fund strength. And so a second ago, you heard me say reserve of the fully funded balance. So in that, first, that previous example, 154,000, if you had 100,000 in your reserves, then 100,000 into 154 would be your reserve fund percentage. And of course, we have different numbers, as I'm going to show you in a few minutes. And right here is a broad scope uh, assessed by over 25,000 different HOAs uh, uh, done by the company uh, with, with which the consultant um, has performed over the last decade. And over time, they basically say, what is your risk of a special assessment? And those that have uh, a 20% or less fully funded percentage, you run as much as a 60% likelihood of having to do a special assessment for something unanticipated. Between 20 to 70%, the percentage goes from 20 down to a low of just barely over 5% to 3%. And then, of course, those that have 70% or more are very, very unlikely to ever have a special assessment. Then, on to this looks kind of similar, but it's uh, basically the same data down here, but it basically says that the first one that had zero over the course of 25,000, 8% of them have had no, they don't do any reserve. 10% have 10% established in their reserve. So 8 plus 10 plus 12 for these first three means that approximately 30% of HOAs around the country of these 25,000 have very poor uh, reserve policies for their replacement. Go to the other side then of essentially 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, like 30 or 45 percent of people are in the middle in terms of perceived strength. And then um, these uh, approximately six plus another 15, 20 percent of them are in a very, quote, ideal position. That's the end of that one. Then I'd like to move to our second slide is uh, a little bit more on the actual uh, components of the funds. So that last part was a reserve study. And now, how are the capital reserves funded? Many of you have heard this, and some of you said on BNF, so uh, it's probably old news to you, but it always helps to reinforce it. We have three current methods for our funds into the R&R &R and for new capital. We get that off of the approximately 27 million that exists at, as of June 30th. Um, dividends on the equities, interest on the CDs, money markets, or bonds. The APFs are $3,500 for every uh, home sale or title transfer that exists. And then um, by policy, the operating income over the operating expenses by policy is to be funded into the uh, reserve funds at the end of the uh, audit period. A uh, real quick snapshot as of June 30th, we hold about 3.7 million in liquidity, um, money market and CDs. They were earning about 1.5% a year ago. Now with the feds going to pretty much a zero um, percentage, uh, they're getting about 0.5 or 0.2. So um, they are uh, used to retain any uh, immediate opportunities they may emerge. Vanguard, a lot of people confuse this. They think Vanguard is the reserve funds. They are a huge component of it, but they are um, not the entire component of the reserve funds. But they hold uh, board-specified requirements, the two or three components that are. This isn't very easy to pick out what our equity is and what our bonds, but uh, by policy, we afford a 60-40, 60% 60 40, bonds, 40% equity uh, distribution. We also make sure that we're not invested in any one particular fund. By policy, it cannot exceed 20%. And they all have to be an index fund, so they're not out stock picking. Um, this essentially means you're, you're more following the market than you are um, driving in any kind of vanguard picking a stock and saying we want to put that into it. So as of last year, we exited out of vanguard with about 21.8 million. This is a point that I always like to point out is that 
There is some downside principal risk. There's no doubt about that with equities and even some bonds, but uh, the investment earnings of about 592,000 would have been on the same, uh, 23 million would have been probably in the uh, $200,000 range had it been sitting in a 0.5 or 1% CD. So uh, over time, typically this, these growth opportunities play out to hundred thousands more of actual return. And uh, this year, even though there's a lot of perception that uh, the market hurt us, the reality is it did not. As of January 31st, we were in a position to be about a million dollars ahead of June 30th, 19, or 2019 balance. Um, it was only then in mid-February when some of the COVID impact, uh, these funds did drop to about 19 million. So there was some consternation on that, but they uh, have recovered. And uh, as of this date, uh, they're actually up to um, 25 million as we speak this morning. Um, one kind of benefit that was gained, and you never wanna you know, ever say this was a good thing, but on February 23rd, that's when some significant impacts started to hit the market, 1,200, type, 1200 point moves and things like that. Um, by our own policy, we, we have to retain that ratio 60-40 any times it moves out of, a, out of that ratio. So Vanguard has as its mandate that if the equities dropped, which they did, then it suddenly became a 65% bonds, 35% equity ratio. So by policy, they um, bought some of the equities and sold off some of the bonds, bought the equities when they were at their absolute low. And so the equities have now um, outperformed, you know, from mid-March back to where they are now. So the association gained about you know, several hundred thousand dollars by, by that timing of the, of the rebalancing. So it doesn't always mean it's going to work to your favor and you don't, I certainly would not prefer such big swings, but we are in this for the long haul. And that's why I believe in a second, you'll see what, that I think it was a wise strategy to, to take some of those moves. And that's, this is the slide I really wanted to point out. This is the position down here that a very conservative posture, nothing wrong with that 90 plus percent of HOAs, either by state mandate or other, um, of their own, you know, put our, uh, put their funds into very uh, preservation of principal type vehicles, whether that's money markets or CDs. This association chose right here to move less from the bonds and CDs into more of these 60-40 equity and bonds type relationship. And here's the somewhat the market equity and um, four to five hundred thousand dollars of dividends that are driving uh, up over time the reserve funds, which has put us in a better position than, than probably would have occurred had we stayed stagnant. So uh, you can't always say things are gonna be perfect in this world, but um, part of that also came off of a little bit of a, not, not a little, there was a move of almost $500 for APF and then slowly, gradually, and then we've been stagnant on the uh, actual APF funds. But in spite of that, um, the tailwinds of the equities and investment of the funds has uh, worked to our favor. Uh, for those that are interested in such market forces, uh, Vanguard by policy presents quarterly. And just for on the board, you'll see that they are scheduled to present on November 3rd at the uh, first BNF for that month. Uh, this is a little bit hard to read, I understand, but um, basically the reserve funds as they existed as, as of June 30th, uh, 2019, the year passed. We had uh, about 3,995 of APFs. Um, the investments I told you earlier was about a million. There's some of the uh, funds and then, uh, excuse me, the uh, dividends. And then uh, this was uh, a little bit below our budget. I think we had a $1.5 million operating excess and due to some impacts from COVID especially on our revenue streams, guest fees, um, tenant fees and golf revenues and bowling revenues, you name it. Um, we did 
offset quite a bit of our operating expenses with some of those closures and things like that, but the revenue impact was, was significantly more than that. So about four, four to 500,000 dollars miss on that. So then you move down to the capital spend portion. The budget was 7.4 million. We did actually actually have a 3.9 million outlays. Now we've got to be careful looking at that number because that was the actual cash outlays. That means that something from the prior year could be in there. But for the most part, it's a pretty good reflection of what we spent for the year. And you might have not recognized it, but remember I told you that 27 246 was our reserve fund. So that's where we exited out of it. And down here, I mentioned earlier the FFP. That's that aggregate of all the those 1,200 line items. So at this time, um, the uh, 49 million. And so as we exit out of it, my um, expectation for uh, communication to the BNF and governing board it will be that we're in about a 50% which I showed you on some of those grids is, is, very, um, is a very solid position. And for you guys, uh, next year, uh, we expect to have about 1,300 home sales at the same 3,500 rate. Quick update, um, the markets are doing pretty good. The housing markets have been doing pretty good. Um, you can say 1,300 is about 108 a month. June and, Ju and July and August are not typically our biggest home sales and yet through the first two months, we're on pace to be just about 103 home sales for those two months. Um, so I feel pretty comfortable, you know, right now that um, at two months in that we're doing good on that. In a second, you'll see that the board approved 5.9 million, and that'll be my last slide for you for the capital update. But by the end of the year, with a inflows of 4.1 million. Outflows of 5.9 million, and this number here is the remaining encumbrance from last year's spend. Remember, I said there was 7.4 million budgeted and 3.9 approximately spent. This is for finishing out, for example, the biggest one would be Carl's um, Coons expansion. We probably did in interim payments to foresight of about 500,000. We got about another million, two to spend. The metal shop encumbrance, the dog park, all those things are carryovers, which was part of the request, I think, for this committee. And then lastly, I'll, I will briefly give you the capital statuses. Thank you. So to summarize, I've kind of said a lot of these. We have really good, you know, I think really good news to say to the properties, to the governing board, to all the association members. Seven point million was budgeted. 234,000 at a minimum was saved on, on projects of the bids that came in versus the budgets. And a lot of that was not just um, some kind of conservative posture on the bids. There was a lot of work done by in-house uh, efforts that saved the association um, a lot of money. Then there were some items that were uh, eliminated. Uh, just to, once again, I'd like to reiterate that just because the board approves doesn't mean we just write POs on July 1st and get all, all of them moving. We, we assess the status uh, every, every day. So that was last year. And so then you, many of you are new, many of you are on prior year. So this will be of some repetitiveness to you, but so the FY 2021, we talked a lot about this during the board approval and the BNF. There were ultimately 77 capital items approved at 5.9 million. But we've made a commitment that given some of the uncertainty of revenue streams and, and on the operating uh, line that we made a commitment to defer till at least January 1st of almost a million eight. We, well, it goes back to what I was saying. We don't issue a PO for sure on those $1.8 million items. And some good news out of the shoot. 24 now have been issued a PO. And we've uh, actually issued about 2.4 million, but what it's kind of hard to explain this next part. Some of these items for Todd, for example, uh, Todd Patty will have almost a million dollars of equipment but he doesn't go out and order them all on day one either. So until we actually know 
you know, whether or not a project is materially complete, then I don't put it into this completed or in progress status. But for the about a million two four has had almost 99% uh, assuredness on those, we've already elicited almost 169,000 of savings on the what was in the budget versus what the uh, price point came in on the capital project. And then I won't expect you to read this. This was 2.5 million. Like I was saying before, this was the encumbrance from the prior year carryover, almost a million three for Kuntz. There's the metal shop, large dark park, all those things I was mentioning. So I'd say to any of you, my door is always open, and to the association members at large, anytime anybody wants to to uh, chat about this or get a lower a lower level of detail, um, I'm open anytime. This is also published as part of our monthly financials within the rec center um, website. So that concludes my thoughts. So. Thank you, Pete. Do we have any questions, Jerry? Any questions? Barbara? Uh, in an indirect way, that's the million eight. I mentioned this, I said the operating, but the reality is all three of them are, if any of them start to fall short, we're going to enact that, that deferred into possible permanent, re and one of them would be if APF came up short, the same, same uh, enaction would happen. I'm saying after two months though, we're, uh, nice, nice to have one sixth of the year in the bank, so. Marshall, you have a Mike? John? Uh, anybody on the phone? Sherry? Nancy? Uh, Sherry, is that you? All right. Uh, Bob, you have any questions? All right. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Pardon? I brought a small slide presentation of photos of products. If anybody would like to see sure. that, that's up to you. Go ahead. Yes. So these are uh, FY 1920 and 2021 capital projects, uh, pretty much following the report. Um, you know, we've shown photos and things at our annual meeting. Um, so this is just give you an update of where we're at today and what's recently been completed. Uh, you can see here, anybody that's not been at Kuntz uh, observing, uh, here is our new addition. Uh, we are currently um, at the interior drywall and paint and uh, getting ready to put a ceiling in there and get them finished up. Uh, here's a snapshot of the parking lot. Uh, I anticipate uh, asphalt uh, beginning either uh, tomorrow or early next week based on them uh, passing their soils conditions uh, inspections. A little snapshot here of the courtyard. Uh, in the far left picture, you can see planter boxes. Um, uh, we are just moments away from, or days away from, uh, starting to put uh, dirt in there and, and get them finished up with uh, plants. Uh, upper right-hand corner is uh, a few weeks ago where we established and poured the, the benches for the decorative ironwork is going to 
uh, nicely enclosed that um, courtyard. And in the bottom picture is an example of uh, what we have hanging for the future heaters for that space so that the, the courtyard can be um, cool months multi-purpose use. A uh, snapshot of the storage room that was approved. Uh, so all of the tables and chairs that are currently stored in the courtyard hallways are going to have a nice home. Uh, it's a really uh, nice space for that and um, also almost complete. Uh, our facts and findings uh, request of last year of the showers, they did meet their useful life, um, but we certainly would have liked to have gotten a few more years out of them. Um, the shower pan liners had, uh, had um, started leaking and we were having bad uh, smells. And once I uh, demoed the, all the walls, um, the framing was just rotten and shot from all the moisture penetration. So. Uh, all that framing has been um, replaced, and uh, here are the results of the, the work. So currently the men's uh, lockers are, are done. We're just going to grout the floor and finish off the special t specialty tile in the shower pans, and the women's uh, locker room showers are being worked on. Also uh, be complete at the same time frame as everything else. Here's a, the new spa room remodel. Um, the big change from the mauves and purples and orange floor that was in there before. So I hope that everybody enjoys this. Um, it's got some really spectacular lighting and ceiling effects. And then um, our new rubber flooring surface. Um, the flooring that is in here will also be the flooring that is going to be put on the whole entire Kuntz pool deck in the next few weeks. Uh, at Ari's Johnson, uh, we had um, that walkway is not just a walkway up to the tennis tower, but it's also a roof. Uh, we have storage and electrical rooms underneath that walkway, and um, that walkway met its life and started leaking, and we were going to have uh, some serious issues if I didn't... Uh, uh, have that redone. So there is your new sealed ramp. Uh, the ARC uh, Club fully funded their own uh, exhaust system. Uh, the fumes from the mechanical uh, work that was being done there was uh, starting to have some impact on uh, members. So uh, they paid for an exhaust. I installed it and it works quite well. Uh, we had the Memos Cafe. Uh, our uh, electrical system was definitely um, being taxed by the um, appliances, and the plan to convert those appliances to gas has not only helped us in our infrastructure, but it's certainly been an, uh, a benefit to um, the restaurant owner. A new gas water heater, and 100% of his appliances are now gas operated. Uh, the Beardsley um, Arts and Crafts Building uh, it was the last of the roofs that needed uh, restoration at Beardsley. I completed the aquatics building a year ago, and um, this gives you an idea of what a roof restoration looks like. All of our buildings, um, are, or a majority of them, have what we call parapet walls, which are the, the vertical walls surrounding a roof and hides all our air conditioning units from street side view. and and uh, gives you an idea of how many units are up on our roofs. But um, to maintain uh, these roofs so that we never have a roof replacement, uh, we generally get a 10-year uh, warranty out of our roof restorations. Every time we do a roof restoration, we, we have it um, uh, checked by engineers to see, to make sure that the product underneath is still sound. And before that, uh, after that's approved, then we go into the restoration mode and we get another 10 years out of our roofs. Generally, our roofs are currently lasting 15 years due to the product that we put down. So just because the warranty um, has met its date, uh, we do try to extend the life of the roof as far as we can and um, before we redo these. Uh, we did some flooring projects at Beardsley. This, uh, 
finishes all the craft rooms at Beardsley that have uh, uh, old LVT or VCT flooring. Um, and these pictures here are the sagebrush room and the photography club. Last year we completed card rooms one, two, three, yoga, um, uh, agave, thank you very much, and um, porcelain painters. So, and then I think this is my final slide is Palm Ridge this year was uh, our, our yearly maintenance on the hardwoods and the whole entire activity center hallway got new carpeting. So more to come in the future. Thank you, Carl. This is part of 7.01 where we had the uh, facilities and Carl's uh, capital projects. So if whoever's taking notes, which is probably just me. Uh, so we're moving on to, uh, do any of the committee members have comments? Uh, Barbara, did you want to talk about the um, clock over at uh, Palm Ridge? I was contacted by Ginny, but it was too late to get in the agenda. Yeah, the memorial part, we have to approve something with that. <clears throat> well, um, the, there's, a, there's a new um, Colorado timepiece, very exquisite clock over at Palm Ridge. That was a memorial clock. Um, for uh, Don Baker, he was an elite athlete, elite swimmer, uh, world champion swimmer, passed away. And so Ginny Baker, his wife, um, decided to do a memorial fund and have a clock uh, put up uh, in his honor. It's an amazing clock. You can sit way outside and still know what time it is. I think it's great. Um, and, it, it, and it is a nice addition where it is. Um, what, what the proposal was, we, they bought the clock, she got it to Russ, Russ put it up, but it's part of a whole memorial. Um, there's, there's a substantial amount of money in the memorial fund to finish it out with a, a picture at a world champion of Don doing the butterfly and, and also um, Don, uh, Don Baker Memorial and his, his, his life, you know, date of birth, time of death type thing to go up on that wall. There's additional funds in there <coughs> that, um, the, that in hopes of putting a very similar clock somewhere outside at R.H. Johnson for swimmers that swim out there as well. But Jenny, Jenny sent it on um, for approval and it had to sit until you know the, this committee came in, into effect. So there is, at, at this point, there's, Russ, there's no cost to, uh, uh, there's no additional cost because the Memorial Fund is paying for it, except y'all have to install this stuff, correct? Right. The only thing that needed to happen next is it needs to be presented to property so they can vote yay or nay. Yeah. And we'll have that on the agenda for the next meeting on October 1st. Perfect. Do you have anything, comments? No. John? Uh, Bob, you have any comments? All right, Nancy? Sherry? Do we have anything that has been emailed in? Madam Chairman, there are no comments from the outside. Thank you. We have no further business. I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>